Welcome to Driving the Line, the pursuit of safety, where we talk about the real issues out on the road, focus on safe driving, and learn industry best practices from your hosts, Kenny Ray, Mike Bohan, and Jim Seibert, in the hopes that by driving the line, we get more drivers home safe and sound. This podcast was made possible by Marsh McLennan Agency. Hello, I'm Mike Bohan, here with my esteemed colleagues and co-hosts, Kenny Ray and Jim Seibert, and we would like to welcome you to another episode of Driving the Line, the podcast that is always in the pursuit of safety. Now, for today's episode, we want to continue our discussion of the FMCSA's hours of service regulations. During our last episode, we highlighted the updates to the hours of service rules that went into effect back on September 29th of 2020. Now, those updates focused on changes in four areas that included the short haul exception, the adverse driving conditions exception, the 30 minute break requirement, and the sleeper berth provision. So today we want to focus on a topic that gets a lot of attention and generates a lot of questions from both drivers and trucking companies and really everybody in the industry. And that is personal conveyance. A controversial and confusing topic to say the least. No doubt about that, Jim. And what makes it so controversial and so confusing is the fact that this is a provision that industry is wanting to use and use a lot. And we have very little regulatory guidance from FMCSA. In fact, all they've given us are a list of questions and a frequently asked question, an FAQ that's found on their website. And we are totally dependent on the guidance from that set of questions. So the confusion comes from the fact that you've got industry craving to use this provision, and we have very little regulatory guidance coming in from FMCA. And that's where we end up with the confusion. Yeah, you're exactly right, Kenny. I don't know how many times I have stood in front of a group of drivers at a safety meeting or sat down with an owner or a safety director and said those exact words. We don't have much, but this is the guidance we have to work with. And what makes PC even more confusing is that it's up to the motor carrier, not the individual driver, to decide how they're going to use it, when they're going to use it, to what degree they're going to use it. So with every company out there setting their own limitations, there isn't a lot of consistency throughout the industry. For example, a company may set a distance limitation for their drivers per day that they can use, or they may set a certain amount of time that the driver is allowed to use PC. And in both of these instances, it's extremely important that the motor carrier is aware of how personal conveyance is being used within their fleet. Other companies may have a policy that states a driver needs to call into the office to gain approval prior to using personal conveyance. And in this instance, it's going to be vital that whoever is on the other end of the phone talking with that driver understands what the regulations are and what the personal conveyance guidance is that's been provided by the FMCSA to make sure the drivers remain compliant with the hours of service regs. I mean, we, we were just having this conversation the other day about a carrier that had this, we had this question come in where um, sometimes there's a, there's a breakdown within the company about, you know, what does operations think about personal conveyance or what does safety think about personal conveyance? We need to understand what the guidance is and make sure that everybody's on the same page within our company with improper use of PC out there on the road uh, being written as false logs during a roadside inspection a lot of companies are just kind of throwing up their hands and saying it's not worth it and they just prohibit the use altogether because they would rather not have personal conveyance being used than to have a bunch of false log violations uh in their csa scores yeah mike it's a regulatory minefield to say the least so let's take a few minutes and discuss the fmcsa's frequently asked questions so question one May a driver who drops his or her last load at a receiver's facility use personal conveyance to return to their normal work location, i.e. home or terminal? The answer is no. Returning home or to the terminal from a dispatch trip is a continuation of the trip and therefore cannot be considered personal conveyance. So question two on this list reads, The guidance allows for authorized use of a commercial motor vehicle to travel home after working at an off-site location. What is meant by the term off-site when used in this context? The guidance says the term refers to a location other than a carrier's terminal or a shipper's or receiver's facility 
where a driver works for a temporary period for a particular job. Specifically, this term is intended for construction and utility companies that set up a base camp near a major job or and operate from there for days or weeks at a time. Now, these remote locations are considered off-site locations. Therefore, travel between home and that off-site location is considered commuting time, and it qualifies for personal conveyance. And you know, guys, y'all, y'all just covered the two most controversial uh, questions on the, and those are the two we get the most most questions about. Uh, the third one is one I've actually never been asked, but y'all both know I'm an old hazmat guy, and I like this one. The third question that F, uh, FMCSA put on the FAQ is this: Is personal conveyance treated any differently when the driver is hauling hazardous materials? The answer is no. There is no restriction on personal conveyance regarding hazardous material transportation, provided that the driver complies with all provisions of 49 CFR parts 177 and 397. And and the only comment I want to add on to that, and I know we're not making commentary in terms of interpretation on this, but that last phrase is very important because parts 177 and 397 of the hazmat regs and the Federal Motor Care Safety regs are what uh, are the rules applied to driving when you are transporting hazardous material. And one of the provisions of that is certain places where you can and cannot park. And uh, the fact that you have to remain on hazmat designated routes uh, when you're in certain locales. So, you know, one of the uses of PC is to allow driver to get home. And uh, so I can't imagine a hazmat motor carrier uh, allowing a driver with a load of hazmat to, to go into a residential area. So it's important to read all of the answers to these questions, not just the initial one. The fourth question that uh, FMCSA put on the FAQ was, can a driver who claims the short haul exception, and we talked about short haul in the last podcast, can those drivers use personal conveyance? The answer is yes. Uh, There is no connection between personal conveyance and the short haul exception. As always, off-duty time cannot extend uh, the maximum allowed uh, time limitation. And that used to be 12 hours on short haul. It's now 14. So uh, I don't know any companies that are using PC and short haul. Uh, I I would encourage if a company is considering doing that, reach out to your risk consultant or your safety professional, make sure you understand the ramifications of using both of those rules uh, in conjunction with each other. So question five, how was personal conveyance time calculated in hours of service rules? Time spent under personal conveyance is off-duty time. Question six on the list says, uh, may a driver use personal conveyance when they run out of available hours, either driving or on duty time. The guidance on this says no, except for the one exception described in the guidance where a driver who runs out of hours while at a shipper's or receiver's facility may drive from that facility to a nearby safe location to park, provided that the driver allows adequate time to obtain rest in accordance with the daily minimum off-duty periods under the hours of service rules before they begin to drive again. Personal conveyance is those times where a driver is operating solely for non-business purpose and cannot be used to extend the duty day. So if you run out of hours, personal conveyance is not an option. You know, Mike, and we both know that that is the one provision of PC that drivers most often violate. Yeah, uh, they'll, they'll be headed back to the yard and they'll be two hours out and they run out of hours and they just say, well, I'm, I'm on PC home. And the second they do that, they just falsify the log. So we know that's an issue in the industry. Uh, Question number seven, are there maximum distance time or distance limits for the use of personal conveyance? And FMCSA says no. Uh, However, it is important to note that the provisions in 392.3 of the Federal Motor Care Safety Regulations prohibit the operation of a commercial motor vehicle while fatigued uh, continues to apply. Therefore, a driver must get adequate rest Uh, before returning to driving. So it's important to remember that even if a company is utilizing personal conveyance, they and their driver are never exempt from operating that vehicle safely. Question number eight. If a driver picks up the commercial motor vehicle from a repair facility once repairs are complete, would the driver be allowed to use personal conveyance to their residents from the repair shop? No. 
travel for repair and maintenance work is being done in the furtherance of the business and is considered on duty time. Question nine asks, can a loaded vehicle be used as personal conveyance? And the guidance says, yes. Determining personal conveyance is based on the nature of the movement, not whether the vehicle is laden. Now, this wasn't always the case. Years ago, uh, the, the trailer or the vehicle could not be loaded when it came to personal conveyance, but we've got to remember it's the nature of the movement, not whether the vehicle is laden. So under current guidelines that we have today, it does not matter if the vehicle is laden or not. It's determined by the nature of the movement. And you know, Mike, you bring up an interesting point talking about the old reg. You know, there was even controversy then because the reg said the vehicle couldn't be laden. And people would always ask us, well, does that mean we can't have a trailer? It's got to be a bobtail tractor. Or can we have a trailer as long as there's no load on the trailer? You know, so even, even the old rule was controversial as well. Absolutely. Uh, the, the next question on the FAQ is, can personal conveyance time be combined with other off-duty time to complete a 10 or a 34 hour break. And if MCSA says yes, uh, since PC is off duty time, and then they make a note, however, it is important to note that the provision in 392.3 of the Federal Motor Care Safety Regulations, which has been referenced in, in a previous question, uh, prohibits the operation of commercial motor vehicle while ill or fatigued, and that, that reg continues to apply. So Woven all the way through all of these questions is FMCSA keeps reminding the industry and keeps reminding drivers, if you use this, you're never, ever, ever relieved from the responsibility of making sure your driver is safe to operate that vehicle's not fatigued. And then the last question on the FAQ was, can a driver be inspected during personal conveyance? And if so, what is the driver's duty status during the inspection? The answer is yes. Since the driver is still subject to the Federal Motor Care Safety Regulations, the driver or the vehicle can be inspected, and the driver's duty status would be on duty, not driving, during the inspection. We actually encounter this pretty regularly. I'll tell you why. We, we've got a lot of clients in Houston, and uh, many of them use owner-operators that are either from South Louisiana or even further east, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, maybe even Florida. And a lot of times those drivers will work two or three weeks at a time around Houston, and then they're just going to take a week off and go home. They're, they're owner operators. They own their own truck and uh, they leave Houston legitimately under personal conveyance and they're on interstate 10 eastbound and they cross the state line at Lake Charles, Louisiana, and they come into the scales and the Louisiana state police have the scales open. They're required to pull in. They get inspected. Now they've been in PC. They're off duty. But the second they're subject to an inspection, they have to change to on duty, not driving, and uh, and be in that status during the inspection. And then they'd go back to PC as they continued the route. So uh, it, it doesn't happen often, but it does uh, occur. And so FMCSA wanted to make sure the industry knew how to address uh, that particular provision. And Mike, that, that brings us to the, the end. And again, we started this entire conversation, you and Jim and I did, about how confusing this reg is. And that's the reason. Those 11 questions we just went over, that is all we're given about personal conveyance. It's good to have guidance, but at the same time, it sure would be nice if we had some more, right? Sometimes it's it's good to, to have clarity and, and to bring consistency within the industry. But uh, um, having guidance is better than no guidance, for sure. So to wrap up our discussion, I want to give our listeners a reminder that personal conveyance is not a mandatory duty status. It's completely up to you as a motor carrier if it's going to be allowed within your fleet. So you as the company have the choice. You've got the decision to make. This is not a driver decision. This is a motor carrier decision. And while we don't have that crystal clear guidance we would have for every scenario uh, that we would like to see, there is specific guidance that we that we have to use in in guiding us to our decision making process regarding personal conveyance and and the guidance that we have are those questions that we just went through. So if you have any additional questions about personal conveyance or you need some some information about personal conveyance, as always, please reach out to your risk consultant. We're certainly here to help. Kenny, Jim, any parting thoughts for our listeners? Yeah, this topic reminds me uh, the old rule of thumb document or it didn't happen. 
Um, it also makes me think that accuracy and honesty are of equal importance when it comes to logging. And Mike, you, you mentioned earlier, um, we, we use the phrase minefield to, uh, you know, describe some of these different changes to the hours of service regs. And in my mind, this, this is the, the one, well, maybe the biggie right now. Uh, because so many motor carriers are wanting to use PC and they just either don't understand it or the drivers uh, have not been taught uh, exactly what they can do. And and I'm really amazed as long as the industry has been using this, uh, but you and I both know we, we get questions almost every single day about, hey, my driver did this, does it fit under PC? And we always go back to these 11 questions because that's the only guidance that we have. So uh, it's a minefield and uh, you hit the nail on the head about the uh, motor carriers needing to be extremely diligent about making a choice about whether or not they do this. Absolutely. It's um, one of those areas that uh, it's th there's an allowance for it in the regulations. But if you as a motor carrier are going to utilize PC within your fleet, uh, please do the work. Uh, do due diligence to make sure that you understand uh, what the guidance is that the FMCSA has provided, because it really can uh, put you in a bind. It can put your drivers in a bind out there on the road. So uh, make sure that you are talking about that within your company. Make sure that safety and operations is on the same page. Make sure that you're training your drivers on what your expectations are so that just everybody's on the same page. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Driving the Line. Please tune in next time, and we'll be discussing best practices for spring traffic conditions as we're transitioning from winter to spring driving. From all of us at Driving the Line, stay safe. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue the pursuit of safety. That's all the time we have for this episode of Driving the Line, The Pursuit of Safety. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and thank you for listening. You can rate, review, and subscribe to Driving the Line, The Pursuit of Safety on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other app you're using. You can also follow Marsh McLennan Agency on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, thanks again for listening. Drive safely, everyone.